Space-time collapse has occurred recently in one of the most remote galaxies in the universe, the Rhino's Eye. A group of space scientists accidentally integrated an ultra-deferential evaluator into a quasi-spatial thermostat. How could you? Well, in simple words, somebody put a time machine, which looked like a TV remote control, inside a teleport that looked like a washing machine. So now, dozens of time and space anomalies are popping up all over the galaxy. You're the leader of the universe security. This highly developed group of humanoid creatures with dog heads monitors the order in the universe and eliminates all kinds of stellar problems in space-time anomalies. With your squad, you now have to deal with the consequences of today, tomorrow, and yesterday's incidents and turn off the teleporting time machine. You get into your star poodle ship and set off on a dangerous journey. The first stop is the planet Up. There, all intelligent and unintelligent life forms move vertically. All people, animals, and other amazing creatures move only up, climbing endless stairs. That's where an alien object from another galaxy and another time has appeared. Find something or someone that's not from this world. Look! There's a snail crawling along that rope ladder. It's moving horizontally. You put the snail in a jar. You're going to send it home, to the planet Slime. Surprisingly, the snail can speak. It asks you for help. An unknown monster has appeared on its world, and now it terrifies all the inhabitants of the Slime world. You decide to help and fly to the snail's planet. Just snails and caterpillars live here. The whole world is covered in a thick layer of slime. You can see huge snails, little ones, and even several snails the size of a skyscraper. But there is also an outsider among them. Take a good look around and find the imposter. Among snail shells, you notice the shell of a big hermit crab. It looks like any other snail shell, but a pair of claws peek out of it. You set up a force field around the crab and transport it to your ship. Your mission here is over. The snails are grateful to you. Your next task is saving the planet Sterilium. This is the most sterile planet in the entire universe. There's no dirt, no microbes, and no bacteria there. One-eyed flying crystals inhabit this pure, sterile world. They can't talk since they don't have mouths, but they communicate telepathically. Your brain receives a signal from them. The crystals are asking for help. A huge meteorite is approaching the planet Sterilium, and you need to destroy it. You can't land on the planet because you might bring microbes here. Instead, you approach the asteroid and scan its composition. You find out the asteroid has come here from a parallel universe. It consists of sugar. Well. You tell the crystals they don't need to worry and fly away from the asteroid without doing anything. Why are you sure nothing bad will happen to Sterilium? The sugar asteroid will melt and burn up in the planet's atmosphere in a matter of seconds. You find out that a guest from the future has turned up on Earth-9. Technologies on this planet are not developed. Even the steam engine hasn't been invented yet. So you decide to perform your mission secretly. You arrive at the field and see three farmers. They walk on the plowed land and carry vegetables. One of them is a farmer from the future. But who? Look, that guy is using a plastic bag. You send him to his time and are about to fly away. But then you notice something strange. Three billion people live on Earth-9, and all of them are supposed to look different. But for some reason, they're identical in appearance. You see three billion farmers working in one huge field. You have a powerful sense of smell, and you feel that the inhabitants of this planet aren't human. They smell like nothing. Take a look at this army of farmers and find out who they are. They are all holograms. One of the farmers is flickering, see? But why would someone create such a huge optical illusion? At this moment, all the farmers, the land, trees, and grass begin to blink. The whole world around you disappears. 
You are inside a small white room now. Your face turns into a human one. Your mouth is covered with a bandage so you can't speak. Your spacesuit turns into a gray shirt. The door opens, and a big guy in a white coat enters. He gives you a mop and a bucket of water. Wash the room, he says, and leaves. You don't remember who you are or how you got here. You need to find out what's going on. But first, you need to know what you look like. How can you figure it out in a white room without any glass surfaces, mirrors, and windows? Take a look at the water in the bucket. It'll show you your reflection. You look at the water surface. Mmm, everything is clear now. The door opens. You leave the room and walk along a long corridor together with the orderly from before. You pass by a room where other people in gray shirts are sitting. You enter the dining hall. The cook pours you some water and gives you a pink donut. Lunch, he says. The orderly removes the bandage from your mouth. You bite into a donut. It has no taste at all. At this point, you realize that everything around you is a hallucination. You're on the planet Sterilium under the telepathic influence of its inhabitants. But how did you understand this? When you looked at your reflection in the bucket, you saw your real face, the dog's one. Everything is too clean and sterile around, and the donut has no taste. Crystals don't know what taste is, so they can't create it. They want to study your body to build an immune system for themselves and destroy the galaxy. Well, you've figured out their secret plan, but how will you get out of here? The only way is to use some bacteria. But where can you get microbes on an absolutely sterile planet? At the moment, you look at the orderly and spit at him. Chaos erupts all over the place. The cook screams and runs away. Your shirt disappears, you become the leader of the universe security again, and your head turns into that of a dog. Your saliva contains microbes. When you spat at the crystal, you infected the entire planet. You leave sterilium during the microbial apocalypse. You meet with your team and are now flying through outer space. Suddenly, you catch a signal from a huge planet called Gectum. It seems the time machine is there. At the moment, the planet is falling into a black hole. You land on Gectum. The sky is slowly becoming black. You notice the shimmering washing machine. This is it! You attach several cables to the machine and lift it onto your ship. The gravitational force of the black hole is growing. Your ship doesn't have enough power to leave this place. What should you do? Use the washing machine. This is also a teleport that can transport you to any point in the universe. You quickly read the attached instructions and open the settings. It worked! Your ship gets teleported to… You land on Gictum. The sky is slowly becoming black. You notice the shimmering washing machine. This is it. You attach several cables to the machine and lift it onto your ship. The gravitational force of the black hole is growing. Your ship doesn't have enough power to leave this place. What should you do? Use the washing machine. This is also a teleport that can transport you to any point in the universe. You quickly read the attached instructions and open the settings. It worked! Your ship gets teleported to… Wait, what's going on? You experience the same episode again and again. Apparently, you've activated not the teleport, but the time machine. Now you're stuck in a time loop and endlessly experience the fall into the black hole that devours time and space. How are you going to escape from the loop? You throw the machine into the black hole. The time teleport is destroyed. You've saved the universe. But you're still falling into the black hole together with the planet. To leave it, you need a tug. At this moment, three spaceships enter Gectum's orbit. Each of them releases a gravitational beam that can drag you off the planet. Among the three ships, only one is friendly and really wants to help you. Which one will you choose? Think fast, the black hole is about to gobble you up.
the ship that looks like a snail will help you. After all, you've saved the snail's planet from the giant crab. The big spaceship pulls your star poodle away from the incredible force of gravity. You find yourself in open space and fly away from the black hole as fast as you can. The universe is saved! Now it's time to see your score. Zero to two points. Maybe you can save a planet or two, but rescuing a galaxy or the entire universe is still too much for you. Three to six points. Hmm, not bad. You can protect the universe, but only from small threats. Sometimes you still feel existential horror because of the impending space problems. Seven to nine points. You deserve your place on the team of the universe security. But you need to remember that you can't save worlds without your colleagues' help. 10 to 11 points. The universe always needs you. Only you can control time and space and crack the trickiest space mysteries. Look at this picture. There's something wrong here. Can you figure out what it is? Most wristwatches are made with the crown on the right side. Detective Harris has come to investigate a new case. A car crashed into a restaurant window, smashing it. There are two suspects, Julie and Douglas. But each of them claims it's the other person who did it. Can you figure out who's lying? It's Julie. The tire tracks on the ground belong to her car. At 9 a.m., Ethan got a call from his friend, an owner of a large business. The man said that a very important document had disappeared from his office. It had been on his desk the evening before, but now it was nowhere to be found. Ethan immediately went there to question his friend's employees. Soon, he had three suspects. Walter said he had spent the previous evening at the movies. Joan had dinner with her friends, and Zachary visited an art gallery. It didn't take Ethan long to understand who was lying. Do you know it too? It was Walter. His ticket isn't torn. It means he didn't enter the movie theater. Look at these prehistoric people. Who is from the future? It's one of the guys carrying water. He's holding a flashlight. Cheryl was reading a book, but she was careless and accidentally tore out pages 7, 8, 100, 101, 333, and 334. How many pages will she have to fix? Just four. 7 and 8, as well as 333 and 334, are different sides of one page. Olivia called the police. She told them someone had broken into her house, tied her up, and taken all her money and valuables. When the officers arrived, the entrance door was open, and Olivia was indeed tied to a chair. And still, the detectives didn't believe her story. Why? If the girl was tied, how did she manage to call the police? Gemma returned from Asia and brought a precious porcelain figurine. She organized a party and invited all her friends to tell them about her journey. They had a great time, but after her friends left, the woman realized the figurine had disappeared. Oh no! She called the police and showed them the photos she had taken at the party. One of the officers immediately realized who had stolen the figurine. Do you understand it too? It was Emma. She hid the figurine under her hat. Look at these four matchstick patterns. Which one is different from the rest? It's pattern number three. In all others, you can find two rectangles, but this one forms just one. One scientist needed volunteers for his experiments, and two friends, William and Oliver, needed money. 
And since the scientists promised the experiments were going to be harmless, they agreed to participate. But in reality, the scientists planned to test the volunteer's reaction to different poisons. First, he trapped the guys in his lab. Then he separated them and locked them in different rooms. William and Oliver could only escape if they joined their efforts. Unfortunately, the scientist was extremely cautious. The guys didn't see each other. One of them could only use the bathroom only in the evening, and the other only in the morning. And still, in a couple of days, the guys managed to get away. How did they do it? They wrote messages to each other on the steamed up mirror in the bathroom with their fingers. They could read the messages later by breathing on the mirror. I shave, cut, and wash several times a day, but I still have more hair than you can imagine. Who am I? I'm a barber. Adam was driving home late at night when he noticed he was about to run out of gas. He stopped at a gas station to fill his gas tank and buy some snacks. Inside, there was a cashier and one more customer dressed in black. When Adam came up to the employee to pay, she told him, $5.05. Adam paid, went outside, and called the police to report an emergency. Why did he do it? The cash register showed 1835, but the cashier said 505, which looks like SOS. Look at these emojis. How sharp is your vision? Can you spot the girl? Right you are. Here she is, on the left. Can you find all six Y's in this picture? Here they are. Good job. You take it and throw away its outside. Then you cook the inside. Then you eat the outside and throw away the inside. What is it? You've just eaten corn on the cob. Marcus woke up in a dark basement with just one candle burning on the table. He saw three doors in one of the walls and three keys lying on the table. How many attempts did the guy need to figure out the key for each door? He needed six attempts at the most, three of them for the first key, two attempts for the second key and two remaining doors, and just one attempt for the last key. But if Marcus is extremely lucky, he might just need three attempts. Look at these words. One of them is odd. Can you figure out which one? First, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. It's the word fourth. It should be spelled as fourth. Look at this picture attentively. What's wrong with it? There are no shadows here. Larry's mother asked the guy to do some grocery shopping. She gave him a shopping list and her bank card. But the woman knew her son was very absent-minded. That's why she gave Larry a small note in case he forgot the card's PIN number. When the guy was at the register, he realized he had indeed forgotten the PIN. Larry pulled the note out of his pocket and immediately remembered the PIN. Can you figure out what it was if the note had a fly, a cat, a person, and a snake drawn on it? The pin was 6420. Larry just had to count the number of legs of each creature. What is the missing number?
it's 78. When read upside down, those numbers are 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, and 91. When someone robbed a bank in a small town on a snowy Monday, the police have four suspects. But all these people claim they've been at home all day long. Look at their homes and try to figure out who's lying. It's Rick. He returned home only recently. He parked his car near the house after the snow had already built up on his driveway. You need to move only two matchsticks to get two squares. How can you do it? That's how you can get two squares. Which of these clocks is the odd one out? It's clock C. On its face, 13 has taken the place of 12. Thomas loved asking his friends to solve all kinds of funny riddles. If they answered correctly, he helped them with whatever they had problems with. One day, Daniel came to Thomas and asked for help with his math exam. He knew the rules, though. He had to solve one riddle first. What kind of running leads to walking? Thomas asked. Do you know the correct answer? Daniel said, running out of gas. And he was right. But helping your friend with exam preparation is a difficult task. That's why Thomas asked Daniel to solve one more riddle. A woman drove from Seattle to Los Angeles. It took her two days to get to her destination. That's when she discovered one of her tires was punctured. How did she manage to get to Los Angeles? Daniel cracked this riddle. Can you do the same? The punctured tire was the spare one. Detective Parkson was working on a tricky case. One day, he vanished. His colleagues found an encrypted note on his desk. The officers knew Parkson had three suspects, Milana, Susan, and Emily. Who had some information about the detective's disappearance? After some time, one of the police officers cracked the code. D plus 1 equals E, L plus 1 equals M, and so on. It was Emily who knew where the detective was. Aaron's enemies kept the guy in a tower that was 150 feet high. Aaron's friends managed to have a pair of scissors and a rope delivered to the man. Unfortunately, the rope was just 75 feet long. And still, Aaron managed to escape. It's known for sure that he cut the rope in the middle. But then what? The guy did cut the rope in the middle. Not across, but along. He tied the two parts of the rope together and got down to the ground. Mike pointed at a young woman in the street and said, She's the daughter of my grandfather's only son. Is the woman related to Mike? She's his sister. Detective Jackson was walking along the street when he heard some noise. He ran to see what had happened. It turned out that some man had grabbed an elderly lady's bag and sprinted away. The detective ran in the direction witnesses showed him. After he turned the corner, he saw three doors. He knocked on the first one. The apartment owner, Patrick, opened the door. The man told the detective he'd just returned from a long run. Another man, Jerry, opened the door. He said he'd been playing basketball behind the house. The third apartment belonged to Raymond, a musician. He had just finished composing a new piece of music. After talking to all these people, Detective Jackson understood who the thief was. Do you know it too? The thief is Jerry. He claimed he'd been playing basketball. But he was holding a football while talking to the detective. <laughs>